Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jerry. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on adaptive layout. In this part of the series, we'll start looking at the core concept of adaptive layout size classes and how they relate to different devices and layout scenarios and the basics of working with them in Interface Builder. Let's get started. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video. To get an introduction to size classes, we'll have a single storyboard with the base layout and it will do something different on iPhone landscape, iPhone portrait, and on iPad. In the past, we might check the orientation or idiom to determine how a view layout should work. The problem with that is there are views that should look very similar on an iPhone in portrait, or a popover on an iPad, or in a split view on an iPad. It's not really the device or orientation that determines how the view should lay out. It's the space that view has. That's what size classes are for. Size classes are defined for both width, or the horizontal size class, and height, or the vertical size class. And each size class can have a value of compact or regular. Devices have a size class specified by default for the screen in different configurations, but you can override that default size class in your code. For example, a full screen app on an iPad has a regular width and a regular height size classes for the top level view. But iPhones in portrait and some iPad split screen configurations have compact width and regular height size classes. This grid shows some examples, but it's not an exhaustive list and only represents the defaults for views that are full screen in these environments. Thinking about your layout abstractly like this in terms of the amount of space available rather than device type or pixel counts allows you to create apps that are flexible and are better prepared for when Apple introduces new devices. Now that you know what size classes are, let's talk about how they're used. You can define constraints and other properties that apply to a view only in a particular size class. For example, you can specify that a constraint only applies if the view is in a compact width and compact height environment. Then if the app is being run on an iPhone 5S in landscape, by default, that constraint will be applied. But what if you only care about one of the dimensions? Wouldn't it be great if you could say, this applies if the height is compact and I don't care what the width is. Well, have I got a deal for you? That's what the any specifier is for. For example, you can set up a layout for any width and any height. This is called a base layout and will apply no matter what the environment is. As another example, if you picked the any width compact height size class, then this would apply to a compact height environment no matter what the width is. Remember that these are showing the size classes only for the full size of the screen on these devices. So for example, if you had an iPhone 6 Plus in landscape, the full screen would be regular width and compact height. But if you were showing a UI split view controller like the Mail app does, the primary view on the left side would actually be in a compact width and compact height environment because the size class describes the available space and are not tightly tied to the specific device. Because you can define a layout that is more generic, like one for any width and any height, and a different layout that is more specific, like one for regular width and compact height, size classes are evaluated in a hierarchy. This is similar to superclasses and subclasses. For example, you can set up a view and its constraints in the any width, any height size class, and then that will apply to all devices. Then you can override the layout for any width compact height size class which will apply those changes only to that environment. Then you can do a final set of customizations in the regular width compact height size class, which is the most specific kind. And then those changes will apply only to the iPhone 6 Plus and landscape by default. Just as with class hierarchies in code, when you subclass, you can add to the base class, override its properties, or just accept the base class implementation if it's sufficient. So you'll usually define most of your layout in the any any size class, and then just override what needs to be different in the more specific size classes. This is the project that we'll be using for this demo. It's just a simple universal application with a single label. And the label is uh, centered horizontally and vertically in the uh, storyboard. You can see the shape of this view is not really the shape of an iPad or an iPhone. It's sort of this just generic square shape. And that's because we're not creating a layout for any sp specific particular view. 
we're creating a, a flexible layout that, that can apply to any of those views. So you can see down at the bottom, we have any width and any height selected. And so this label will show in, in all layouts across all size classes. If you click on that, you can see we've got this new pop-up that allows us to choose the size class that we're working with. And the middle one is, is this any, any size class. If you pick any of the size classes in the corners, they're a specific width size class and specific height size class. So for this one, it's compact width and compact height. And there's this hint down at the bottom that shows by default which devices and which orientations will, will use this size class. And so by default, the three and a half inch, four inch and 4.7 inch iPhones in landscape will have a compact width and compact height size class. And the same is true of the other size classes in the corners. They're, they're specific width and height size classes. In between those are more generic size classes. They're specific in one direction, but generic in another direction. So in this case, we have one that's a, a compact width, but any height. And by default, this is for all compact width layouts, which are um, these iPhones in portrait or landscape. Let's switch over to the compact height, any width compact height size class. And you can see the bar down here changes to blue just to sort of call your attention to the fact that you're, you're dealing in a, a different size class than any any. But the shape of the editor also changed. It's still not really specific to any device, but it's not as tall as it was before. Just sort of indicating that you're in a compact height size class. Let's go ahead and duplicate this label. I'll just drag it, hold down option and drag it. We'll change this to say compact height. So let's add some constraints to this label. We'll center it horizontally in the container and add vertical spacing to its neighbor. If we switch back to the any any size class, that label no longer shows. And if you look over here in the document outline, it shows this sort of grayed out look. The label is still there, but it's not installed in this size class. Because we added it in the compact height, any width size class, it'll show up in that size class and any size class that's more specific than that. So if we switch, for example, to the regular width compact height, then it'll show up there. And if we switch to the compact width, compact height, it'll show up there. And you can see also that the shape of our editor is changing again as well. Let's duplicate it one more time. We'll rename this. And just add the constraints. Now again, because we were in the compact width, compact height size class when this is added, if we change to another size class that's more generic, it will not show in that size class. Okay, now to test this out, we could run on all these different devices, run on an iPhone 4, 5, and a 6 to make sure that it shows up in landscape, and then a 6 plus to make sure that it doesn't show up. But let's use the assistant editor instead. If I turn on the assistant editor, you may have used this to look at code or create outlets in code while you have your storyboard open, but you can also change this to preview and it'll show, let me just make a little room here. I'm gonna hide the document outline. It'll show what the currently selected view from the storyboard will look like in different layouts. So this layout is the iPhone four inch layout and we can rotate it, see what it looks like. We can also add other layouts. So for example, we can add the iPad and you can see that it's showing the, the shape of the iPad. And because the iPad does not have a compact height or compact width size class for apps that are full screen, it only shows that base layout label there. If you want to delete an item from your preview, you can just select it and hit the delete key. And we can look at a couple of other iPhones. Let's look at the iPhone 6. And we'll rotate that. 
and we can see it also has a compact height size class in landscape and let's add the 6 plus if we rotate the 6 plus then we can see it has compact height but it doesn't have that compact width size class and this is just a great way to preview your layout in different size classes and there's a couple of new ones in this preview that we can look at the iPad has split screen multitasking now and so the user can drag two applications onto the screen and they can show one app in half the screen and another app in, in the other half the screen or it can be one third two thirds and so there that's why there's these two third width one half width and one third width preview modes and so we can add in the iPad one third width and that shows um, what it would look like in that layout. And of course, there's the iPad Pro previews as well. Well, that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we'd like to leave you with a challenge. In this tutorial, you use the size class picker to add views just to a certain configuration of size classes. Your challenge for this video is to do the same thing from the any any size class using the new installed checkbox in Interface Builder. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.